This is showing the movements of the pitch heave surge rig, moving in surge there, now in heave, and you can see that the duct just recovers from capsize, very high centre of gravity, only just recovers. This is a view from behind. You can see nearly at the top of the picture the one of the torque motors coming into the middle of the picture there now, which is used for controlling the stiffness electronically. It's a powerful bar magnet in the middle of a toroidal coil. To the left, you can see a micrometer movement, which you use for, for velocity sensing. Um, now, that's a rather boring picture of an oscilloscope. Um, I think it means that we're about to drive the pitch heave surgery. Yes, we're driving it in heave, and it's radiating waves differently on each side, and we make useful measurements of the size of the waves made by moving the model. That's the one of the torque motors again, one on each side, brushless. That's a view from behind. You can see the edge of the torque motor and the arms which used to have big heavy weights on. We now find it's better without any weights. And there's a biasing spring in a housing that can be rotated so that we can trim the model up and down. I think that means we're now about to drive the model in surge. Yes, we're driving it in surge with the nod axis locked, I suspect. And that's the surge drive motor coupled up through leaf springs. And again, a little micrometer movement, which is a very, very nice velocity pickoff. Very cheap, but quite, quite noise free. There's a waterline level view of the, of the duck. The power amplifiers that control the, um, the big torque motors are down underneath. All analog electronics. You can see the inside of a torque motor at the middle of the bottom of the picture there, plus some old duck models. And you can see quite a lot of rig movement going on. Sometimes it's second harmonic motion like that. There's the close view of the toroidal magnet, sorry, the toroidal coil and the bar magnet across it. Never take the, the magnets out. They, they get damaged if you do. That's the amplitude of the wave coming in. Now, this is part of the control dynamics. We're now changing the damping. We've increased the damping on the duct, and you see it's now held stationary, and we're going to get a, a reflection with an anti-node at the beak of the duct. Now we're taking the damping right down to zero, and the duct will nod very vigorously, and now we'll get a reflection, but with a node at the beak of the duct. And, of course, the best setting will be somewhere between the two, and the theoreticians predictions and our measurements are in very good agreement. That's a view from above the duck. Um, the pitch heave surgery is made of planes and spaces with very fat tubes with very thin walls, giving it all the rigidity you want. You can see some of the inside linkages covered with spray from ancient freak wave tests. Some strain gauge conditioning at the top. Side view of the duck there, you can see the wires of the dynamometer coming out and the ballast weight holes and a lot of mounting movement going on. close-up view of the waves coming in. And evidence of the efficiencies that we claim. Remember that the power goes with a square of wave height, so that's really quite a high number there. We are calculating the efficiency on the width of the tank rather than the width of the duct, which only occupies about three quarters of the tank. Uh, this is the computer that's making uh, a spectrum for driving the narrow tank wave maker. And this is the result. Quite a rough C. Probably a Pearson Moscovich with one second period but rather increased amplitude. You can see the mounting moving quite a lot now. It's designed to yield uh, if the force exceeds what we think is the economic limit. And then it goes to a constant restoring force. Occasionally the duck will capsize and have to recover.